two main things that Allah wants us to fulfill. Number one is his rights, the rights of Allah. So I would worship him alone as per the way he wants. I worship him and I make sure that I don't go against his transgressions. He decides what's halal and haram. And I should be proud of being a person who is chosen to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say proud here, we're talking of being happy. We're not talking of pride as in arrogance. But what's important to know is there will be challenges that we will face while we are trying to fulfill this duty. And these challenges are in the form of distractions in order for us to be tested who from amongst us is truthful and who is not truthful. So Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Do the people think that it's enough for them to say, I'm a Muslim? And then they won't be tested. Allah says, we have tested those before them in order to distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are not, those who are false in that claim of Islam. Islam meaning the submission. So the second right or the second duty that we have, one is worshiping Allah. One is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is the rights of the creatures of the same Allah who created us. So with me and with you, we tend to forget that Allah created others. Just like he loves me, he cares for me, he's going to provide for me, he will provide for them too. And he loves them and cares for them too and he wants them to turn to him as well. A person leading their life for 70 years in the wrong direction can make a move in one moment that would elevate their rank higher than a person who was in the right direction for 70 years and made a wrong movement. So while we are worshiping Allah, we must fulfill the rights of the rest of the creation. Why did Allah create people who are going to be disbelievers? Well, for them it's a test, but for me, it's an even bigger test. What do I do about it? There are some who, whose knowledge is lacking so much and whose patience lacks so much that they want to attack and harm those whom they disagree with. But Allah created them. When Allah speaks of the rights of neighbors through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu in the hadith, he tells us in his wording, he says, you know what? Your, your neighbor, if you believe in Allah in the last day, then don't harm your neighbor. And he speaks of the rights of neighbors who are Muslim, those who are not, those who are relatives, those who are near and distant, they all have rights. Your neighbor, a non-Muslim, your neighbor, a person who disagrees with you certain matters and their rights. Why? Because that's how you will get closer to Allah by understanding his power, his creation, his authority, his grandeur. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did Allah create the pig and tell us that it's haram to consume? Why? Why did Allah create uh, the dogs and the monkeys and tell us you're not allowed to eat those? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the snakes when they are harmful? Why did Allah create the lions and the tigers when we know that it's dangerous? For a purpose, for a reason. He's the same Allah who made me, so I need to respect the rest of the creation of Allah, so much so that we as Muslims are not allowed to go out and start throwing stones at pigs just because they're pigs. We cannot just go and harm dogs just because they're dogs. No, they are the creatures of Allah. So this, that is one aspect of uh, our lives to understand the two uh, duties that we have. One is unto, well, it's all unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the rights of Allah and the rights of the rest of the creation and the rights more so of humankind as well. While trying to fulfill the obligations unto Allah, we will find that we will have, like I said earlier, distractions, obstacles, challenges. And sometimes when we don't control the heart and we don't realize that it needs to be put in its place, 
we tend to turn towards things that we're not supposed to turn towards because they are harmful. In the process, we tend to displease Allah. I'll give you an example. A person who's walking down the road and he sees someone with a beautiful motor vehicle and he really likes it and he wants it and he's so attracted by this beautiful car that he starts thinking for a month, two months, three months and then he realizes the best way of getting it is to steal it. What happened? He wanted something and he didn't control himself. He wanted it so badly that he, wouldn't, he didn't mind to think of transgressing the command of Allah in order to get it. That's one type of pressure. So today we have drugs, big problem, huge problem. People don't realize that in order to engage or participate or take those drugs, people are transgressing Allah, they're losing focus, their, their lives are becoming meaningless, meaningless. And yet they think that they're happy for a while because perhaps it's marketed in a certain way, it's the in thing. The same would apply to our identity as Muslims. Are we proud Muslims? Let's be honest, today, it's not so easy or it's not as easy as it was before to tell the difference between some who are Muslim and not. Whereas there was a time when it was quite simple to tell the difference. It becomes so hard because why? Sometimes we are giving up this identity because of pressure. Pressure of what? Community, society, friends, everything else, the trends of today that we've seen on social media. So we give up our identity as Muslims. If that is the case, we're losing focus. The purpose of our life, the entire purpose, we're losing focus from it. We're starting to focus on things that are not actually the purpose of life, but they're supposed to be part of your living, part of your making easy your connection with Allah. We're clothed, not, not in order for us to transgress, but in order for us to get closer to Allah. Allah says, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ A verse with deep meaning. We, when we dress, there are two things. Bear Allah in mind. Be conscious of Allah when we're dressing. And when you clothe yourself with piety itself, then it's even better for you, subhanallah. So clothing, yes, while it is referring to that which is physical, it has to do with our attitude, it has to do with the way we talk and what else we do. All that is part of taqwa. It's like when Allah says, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna. When it comes to your spouses, when it comes to your wives, Allah says, they are like a garment unto you. It has a deeper meaning. It doesn't mean that I take my wife and I wear her as a cloth, as a piece of cloth. No, but it has a deeper meaning, very deep meaning. In the same way, libasul taqwa has quite a deep meaning. It's referring to quite a few things. And what this goes to show, Allah will allow us to enjoy things within this world for as long as we don't lose focus. We don't lose focus of the main aim of our existence. And this is what seems to be happening. So in the next few minutes, inshallah, we will allow, uh, you know, discussion around this subject of the purpose, purposeful life and living. And there are many angles of looking at it. Sheikh Ali looked at a beautiful, beautiful angle of it. And I've just put forward also a certain angle, the challenges that we face while trying to live as Muslims, living upright, looking at society, seeing your jobs. I mean, you get a job, but to fulfill your salah is not a joke. Uh, some people say, you know, can I just go home and read all my four salah that I've missed because I was working? I mean, is it really that bad? Are you really compromising your akhirah because of the dunya? So matters of this nature, those who compromise their dress code, their morals, their ethics, their values, their duties unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this age is an age of interest and usury. Is it, is it okay because you know, like it's tough, you know? So can't I just X, Y, and Z? Well, to be honest, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. We do admit and agree that there are a lot of pressure, pressures, tremendous amount of pressure on our youth and on various other uh, categories of society but we need to navigate through these tough times 
And that's why we're here, inshallah, discussing this matter. So I'd like to, inshallah, ask the moderator to take over, inshallah. 